All right, so number one, it has the height in meters is measured for each person in a sample. After the data are collected, all the height measurements are converted from meters to centimeters and multiplying each measurement by 100. Which of the following statistics will remain the same for both units of measure? Okay, so the mean will not um, remain the same because when you're multiplying by 100, so the mean will change by a factor of 100. Um, the median will also be multiplied by 100, so it won't stay the same. The standard deviation of the height measurement, this is a tricky one. This will technically still change. It will still, again, be multiplied by um, that value. But, well, let's look at Let's go through the other one so I can explain a little more on that. Um, the, the maximum of the height measurement, that's also going to change because, again, um, if the max is, you know, two meters, um, then it will change to 200 meters or 200 centimeters. The Z scores are the height measurements. Okay, so this will not change because this is a standardized score. And it doesn't matter if you measure in feet, centimeters, inches. Um, that's the whole point of the Z score because it gives you a relative um, relative idea of where you lie in the population. Um, standard deviation, um, going back to that, that's a measure of spread. So the, the, the spread, um, how spread out the values are relatively speaking doesn't change, but the value of the spread will change still. So um, like, for example, like, let's say that the, the tallest person is two meters and the shortest is one meter. Their spread is one meter. Um, so they're basically, you know, the tallest person is twice the shortest person. But if you change it to centimeters, the tallest person will be 200 and the smallest person will be 100 centimeters. So their spread is still different, but their like relationship is still the same because the tallest person is still twice the smallest person. Keep this in mind as you're going through this exam because that's going to be uh, something that I'm sure they're going to try to assess you with some tricky problems. All right, problem two, a school principal wants to investigate student opinion about the food served in the school cafeteria. The principal selected at random samples, at random samples of 50 first year students, 50 second year students, 50 third year students, and 50 fourth year students to complete a questionnaire. Which of the following best describes the principal's sampling plan? Okay, so this is an example of a stratified random sample. The strata are the, um, are the grade levels freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors, um, or first year, second year, third year, fourth year. And um, we use strata um, when we have um, suspicion that the, there's a factor, in this case, the age level or grade level will have an influence on how they respond to the survey. So the strata would be the, the, you know, the year of the students. So three, a candy company, a candy company believes, or candy not believes, candy company, well, candy company produces individually wrapped candies. The quality control manager for the company believes that the weight of the candies is approximately normally distributed with mean 720 milligrams. If the manager's belief is correct, which of the following intervals of weights will contain the la largest proportion of the candies in a distribution of weights? So if it's normally distributed, it'll fall somewhat of a bell shape. As a mean of 720, the 720 will be in the middle like that. And so then the intervals that are centered around 720 will contain the um, largest proportion. So let's see which of these are centered around 720. So this is 740 to 780. So 740 to 780 would be like, let's say on this side. So not that one, I'm gonna say not that one, but let's look at the other one, 700 to 740. See, so this one's centered at the mean, 700 to 740. So it contains all of this, 680 to 720. Again, it would be kind of like this one, but on the other side, so this is from here to here, and 660. So the farther we get away from the center, the less of the proportion it would contain. So the answer is going to be B. 
because again, if it was normally distributed, um, the like one standard deviation within the mean on both sides contains 68% of the data. Remember, remember the 68, 95, 99, 7 rule. Problem four, a company currently uses brand A light bulbs, which have a mean life of a thousand hours, a salesperson marketing brand B, a new brand of bulb contacts the company. The company will switch to the new brand of bulb only if there is convincing evidence that the mean life of brand B is greater than a thousand hours, which is following a hypothesis should the company test. So the null hypothesis versus alternative. So remember the null hypothesis is basically a status quo. Um, like, you know, we just assume that it's that whatever um, we're trying to um, um, prove, uh, whatever we're trying to disprove is true. So um, the, the, the null hypothesis would be that the true mean is a thousand hours. So let's, so a, um, let's see which of these would be. Brand A light bulbs. So we care about brand B. Right. Um, a salesperson is marketing brand B. So brand B, the mean life of brand B is a thousand hours. So it's not gonna be C, D, or E because we don't care about brand A. We were, we're, we're studying brand B. And so then um, the alternative is that the, tr that the true mean or the mean life of the brand B bulb is more than a thousand hours. So, because it says greater than. That's what we hope to find um, in, um, strong evidence in favor of. So it would be A, because it says more right, right here. So the answer is A.